And we will go to England for this one. I believe Manchester, England, to be exact. We are now being joined by featherweight Mike Wilkinson, who is joining us right now. Mike, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you, Ariel? Are you in Manchester? Yes, I'm in Manchester. Okay, so interesting times for you, my friend. Um, I was... Um, I was alerted of this, this, this fascinating documentary. So I'm a, a big lover of documentaries. And um, in MMA, as you may know, not that many great documentaries out there. But you have worked in conjunction with the Manchester United Football Club to make this sort of, uh, I think it's like an 80 or 90 minute documentary on the last two years on your life. How did this come together? Well, it was uh, actually before, it was probably a year ago. And uh, I was, I think I just got the call to fight uh, Alan Omer in Germany, in Berlin. And uh, I got a message off the UFC and said, what, what uh, football team do you support? I was like, Man United. And then I didn't hear anything for like three or four weeks. And, uh, and then down the line, that, and then I got another message saying, uh, Man United wanted, uh, wanted MUTV want to do a thing on you. So I thought, oh, I didn't really think too much into it because like, it's Man United. I support them. I have done since I was a kid. It was a bit. It was like too good to be true. So then I started talking with a uh, Phil from MUTV, and yeah, and then the, the, within within five days they started filming me. They came to uh, to the gym, and uh, it just went from there. And then obviously a week out, I got injured, and uh, they said obviously I thought they was going to stop it then, but they said it just makes the documentary better with what's going on. So uh, yeah, so I constantly just kept filming and kept filming, and uh, yeah, it's just it's they've been with me ever since. Wow, that, so so you're a lifetime fan of the Red Devils, and now they're following you. And and, and MUTV is that a TV channel or is that a website? No, it's a TV channel. Wow. Uh, it's a TV channel uh, for Man United, which is uh, which obviously when the documentaries are, the documentaries are this Thursday, it'll be all over Europe, all over Asia. So it's it's, it's going to be uh, viewed by over hundred millions of people. It's going to, so it's going to be a big thing. I'm really excited. So from what I understand that they like to follow uh, Man United fans who are outside of the you know football world, the soccer world, and, and see what's going on. So this doesn't really have anything to do with, with football, as you call it, in Europe, right? This is about your career solely. Yeah, obviously a Manchester lad uh, who sports Man United, and obviously they just want to make the, the TV channel they've got better than what it already is. Like before me, they've had one on Anthony, Anthony Carolla, who's a, box, who's a Manchester boxing lad. They've done one on a, a Manchester rugby player. And uh, I'm the first MMA fighter, so yeah, it's, it's exciting. So I don't know if you know this, but I am a lifelong, and I mean lifelong, I bleed these colors. If you open my vein, my veins, you'll see them come out. I am a lifelong Leicester City fan. I've been supporting them since I was a little lad, and, and, and they are just kicking ass from what I understand. <laughs> I've been watching all their games. I mean, I cannot get enough of Leicester City. Did you know that about me? No, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know to pick them, my friend. Uh, I've been supporting. How, how are they doing this year, Leicester City? Really good. Oh really yeah. Good. How's Man United doing? Hey, come on. Let's not go. Let's <laughs> not go there. Let's not go there. You've got to go back in history, then we can go there. <laughs> what's the? But in a nutshell, though, because I know we have a lot of fans in Europe. What's the problem with Man United? If you could fix them, what would you do? The manager, isn't it? Since Alex Ferguson went, they just spiraled down. But. Uh, Everyone has to go down to come back up, and uh, things will change, and the team will get better, and uh, they, they, they're going to get back on winning tracks, winning ways, I can my words. Okay, fair enough. Now, here's the interesting thing. You said that this premieres Thursday on MUTV, right? Yes, correct. And it's about the last you know, couple fights in your run. Um, coincidentally, it, it coincides with another major piece of news concerning you, right? Yes, true. Uh, unluckily, after the Mac One fight, uh, I thought it was a little hard done by, but it's business at the end of the day, and the UFC have got the reasons of what they want to do with fighters, and obviously they say, they say it's a stacked division, and uh, the UFC have, have actually released me hmm. since my last fight. What was your reaction when you got that news? Were you expecting it? Did you think after that fight, even though you came out on the losing end, that this was even a possibility? Uh, well, obviously, I came from a uh, knockout of the night over Nicholas Backstrom, uh, and obviously, injuries happen. It's not my fault I get injured. Things happen. Uh, you've just got to brush it off and go again, which you did. But obviously, after I got a lot of recognition after the, the Backstrom fight, and uh, after that, I kind of, obviously, since the injury, I, I went off the radar kind of thing. And uh, so, yeah... It, 
it was a bit of a shock. Obviously, I went that I went into that fight. I wanted to put a show on for the fans. That's my if you if you look at my fights and who I fought and what I'm about, I want to put a show on for the fans. Uh, Mark Kwan, not taking the win away from him, not making no excuses. He played it safe. He didn't he didn't want to stand with me. He didn't want to put a show on. He just wanted to get the win, and uh, that will only get him so far. I, to, for me, I'm a, I want to be like kind of a prize fighter. I want to put a show on for the fans. Have wars like you know, like fights like Diego Sanchez and Gilbert Melendez. I want to go out on my shield and I want to I want to make history like them, man. And uh, when someone just wants to lie on me for 15 minutes and not really do much, it's because it, he is a better wrestler. I'll, he's a Greco uh, Roman wrestler. I'll not take that away from him. But uh, I was the one. He was only the person going for the sub attempt. Uh, I wanted to stand up and have the fight. He did what he had to do get, to get the win. Fair play to him. It is what it is. But I do feel like I've been hard done by. But Everything happens for a reason, and uh, I'm just, I'm just. Even though I lost the fight, it's a personal victory to myself. After everything I went through with the injuries and having over a year layoff, just to do three rounds and uh, and not gas and and come out of the fight injury free, ready to go again. Because uh, obviously my last three round fight was uh, my first UFC fight against Brendan Lockney back at the end of 2012. Obviously, I fought a year after that uh, against Ronnie Jason. I got put to sleep because I didn't tap in a minute and 20. And then a year later, I fought Nicholas and I put him to sleep in a minute and 20. And even though the fight, even though I got the win and obviously everybody wants that quick win, when I fought Nicholas and I knocked him out so soon, I actually, I was a, I was obviously, I was over the moon. I was mm. made up, but I kind of wanted to get the get the time and get the fight, get the live fight time in. Uh, I would have been, I would have been happy if it would happen in the second and third, but it, it is what it is. But uh, so to get three rounds in, uh, obviously it didn't go my way, but I come out of the fight, I'm injury free, and I'm, I'm good to go again. It's like I know the UFC's released me. Uh, I started fighting because I love MMA, and everybody who starts fighting, they do it because they love the sport, they, 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 they breed it, they love it, they, they sleep it, they, they everything. So it's like no. It doesn't matter what octagon I'm in. It doesn't matter what crowd I'm, in, I'm put in front of. Uh, it doesn't matter what organisation. I just want to go out there and do what I love to do, and that's to put the gloves on and to have a fight. So, so you get this news, and as you just mentioned, you're two and two in the UFC. Did you try? Uh, yeah, I know they probably informed your manager. I don't know if they came to you first, but did you try at least to convince them? Like, look, I'm two and two. I had some injuries. There's a lot more fight left in me. It, typically, a guy with a 500 record, you know, you're a young guy. It, 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 this is kind of a surprise. I, I will admit, I was surprised when I heard this news. Did you try to convince them otherwise to change their mind? Well, the, the management, uh, heavy duty. They have been. Uh, I think they've sent an email since, but straight after the win, straight after the fight with Macwan. Uh, because I was injury free, and I want to, I want to, I want to make up for lost time. That was my thing. It's like I'm injury free now. I know I've lost, but please get me back straight back in. I sent a, an email to Sean Shelby, uh, what me and Darren McCoach uh, came up with, and it was a perfect thing to say. It was like, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I'm good to go again. Uh, cut a long story short. Please put me back in. Uh, and obviously he didn't get back to me, and I just thought, well, he's a, he's a busy man. He's got all these shows. What's he going to ma- do matches for? And uh, I didn't hear back from him. And my coach said, uh, Darren, he said that he kind of, he kind of, he kind of had the feeling what was going to happen because because he, he never got back to me. But I was, I just thought, nah, nah, they'll not cut me. I'm, I'm two and two. I've got, uh, I've got a decent fight. Well, that was a war with Brendan. And then uh, my second one, I got knocked out of the night. Uh, so it's one of them. It's like this documentary's come out. It's, Everything happens for a reason. I think this is that this is coming out at the perfect time. Mm. Uh, it's, it's going to build my profile up, and uh, I'm just going to take it one fight at a time. And uh, let's just see where see where I end up in three or four fights and see what happens. So I was actually going to ask you that next. Uh, this coming out, I, I was I was wondering if you had mixed emotions because it's talking about your UFC career and it comes out when when this news, you know, comes out and and now you're no longer a part of the UFC. But in a weird way, is this sort of like the perfect way to get your name out there? Like you can use this as your free agent pitch to people and and hopefully, you know, some people will jump on this. Yeah, kind of. I do actually feel like that. Uh, like I said, I've, I th- I feel like everything happens for a reason. The UFC have released me. Uh, the documentary is coming out on Thursday. Uh, it's going. So I said over hundreds of millions of people who's going to watch it. There's other organisations in Asia. There's there's other ones. They're all over the world. Uh, 
And I know it's not the UFC. The UFC is uh, the creme of the crop, the, the premiership and all that. And uh, we thought uh, down the line I could, I could get, I could get, a, I could get a, another shot in the UFC. But uh, I love to fight. I live to fight. So uh, please let me fight. Whether it's in the UFC, whether it's in Bellator, One FC, uh, KSW, all the other organisations, uh, I'm good to go. I'm ready to fight. So pick up the phone and get in touch. Heavy duty fight well. And um. Have they been able to update the documentary to to say that this has happened? So now you can really get the word out there. Uh, no, the documentary's finished. It's been done. But uh, Man United said they want to do an add-on to this. To the, they want to do a second documentary because this one was so good. So good news to you and to me. This will probably be the start of the second documentary. Wow. Okay. Any word yet from um, you know? I know there's a lot of promotions in Europe. Uh, Bama and, and and Cage Warriors is coming back. And some others as well. Any word yet? Any interest from them? Do you have a preference? Uh, I'm not bothered. It's like I said, uh, I'm, I'm just happy that I'm fit and healthy and I'm good to go again. So uh, I'll, I'll leave that to my coach, Darren, my managers, uh, Paul King and uh, Kyle Messin. I'll let them deal with that. I know that they've got my best, my best, but my best thoughts and interest. And I'll leave it to them, and I'm no doubt that they'll, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll pick the correct path for me. Yeah, um, it's a great documentary. I had a chance to see it. I mean, even the opening scene is just fascinating. You're on, um, you're on the bike, and your mouth is taped, so you can only breathe out of your nose. It's unbelievable, this thing. It's, uh, do, you, do you do that often? I mean, I'm no athlete. It's cr- that, that's, 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 is that tape? Is that just tape? You just tape up your mouth like that? I tape my mouth up fully, uh, so I can only breathe through my nostrils. Uh, we do like, at the beginning of camp, I do like a five minute sprint with 30 seconds rest, and I do five fives. And then by the end of camp, I do like uh, eight eight minute rounds uh, on the bike, mouth taped, only breathing through my nostrils, and then with 30 seconds rest. Uh, well, I used to do the gas mask, but the gas mask brings uh, like an anxiety and a panic mode to what, so it's kind of like the fight, but. With the masks, I, I, I tend to thought that I was breathing like or my mouth like that. Mm. So I thought you, you don't want to fight and get used to having your mouth open because if you get clocked, you mm. go to sleep. Mm. So, so me and Darren thought of a way. I, and, and obviously, I, I got like a bit of a mad. I'm, I'm a bit. Uh, I'm a bit addicted to pushing my body to levels that like I'll never enough pass out or I'll like I'll just do loads of mad stuff like well I'll, I'll take it to that next level where I know that my opponent's not doing that. So. Uh, we came up with the mouth tape because my me, jaw's me clenched mm. as I'm as I'm on the bike, and uh, it worked great. And obviously, and obviously, I don't through injuries and stuff. Me, and obviously, Darren's because Darren trains just as much as what I do. He's he's like my my number one training partner as well as my coach. So we, we've had our injuries and we know what's good for us and we know what's bad for us. So it's like through a camp now. I don't even do any strength and di- strength and conditioning. We do a circuit. What we do is like a wrestler circuit at the beginning of the class. Uh, it's for the all upper body, and uh, I do obviously I do my bike sprints, I do my incline sprints, what we did on the Ultimate Fighter, and uh, I do loads of underwater swimming as far as I can as far as I can underwater, come up, and then get my breath back, and then I go again, and I do like 20, 30 lengths. And at the beginning of camp, it was like I could only do one length, and then by the end of camp, uh, when I first started doing them, I could do three lengths. So it just proves that mixing mm. up and doing different things. And uh, adding new things to what you've done and to what you've not done uh, makes you a better all-round athlete. Uh, what time does it premiere on Thursday? Nine o'clock uh, British time, British and time. I think it's on, uh, it's on again in Asia on the Friday at five o'clock. Do you know if they're going to be able to uh, show it here in the U.S.? Uh, not at the moment. No, it's not. It's not heard in the U.S. But obviously, you will be able to stream it if you go on MUTV. Okay. Uh, on the, on the website or whatever you will be able to stream it well I wish you the best my friend thank you very much for coming on the show uh, good luck with the documentary good luck with your you know your career the next step in your career thank you for coming on and uh, I'm sorry to hear that I, I was very surprised to hear the news um, thought you know you had another one at least in you but uh, have no doubt that you'll be back so I look forward to seeing what your next step is and I wish you the very best thank you very much Ariel thanks for having me on everything happens for a reason brush off and we go again all right. Very well said, Mike. There he is, Mike Wilkinson, a free agent featherweight now. Um, you heard it from his mouth himself. Parted ways with the UFC. And now looking for another 
promotion to fight for. Now, during that interview, the UFC has uh, released more breaking news. Here's a statement on Juliana Pena, uh, courtesy of UFC.com. Quote, UFC announced today that an investigation into allegations of assault by UFC competitor Juliana Pena is now complete. Pena recently came to a resolution with the prosecutor's office in Spokane County, Washington. The resolution was thoroughly reviewed by Campbell and Williams, a Las Vegas-based law firm hired by UFC to oversee its investigation into the matter. UFC elected not to schedule Pena for a bout while the legal proceedings were ongoing. Now that the matter has been resolved, Pena is eligible to return to competition in the UFC and will be scheduled for about in the near future. While UFC is supportive of the resolution of Pena's criminal matter, Pena acknowledges that her actions as a professional athlete should reflect well of her, the sport of mixed martial arts and the UFC. Consequently, Pena has volunteered to participate in counseling as a condition for her return to the octagon. So good news there for Juliana Pena. You heard her on the program a couple of weeks back, and hopefully she can move on from this and uh, get back in the cage. Oh, so very close to a title shot.